The sole purpose of this video is to provide a basic overview and orientation of your new apparatus. This video is not intended to act as or replace individualized driver operator training. Individual fire departments may base guidelines, policies, and procedures tailored for best practices. Pierce Manufacturing and Hughes Fire Equipment representatives are not liable for injuries caused from acts resulting from actions inconsistent with the information provided within this video and or accompanying manuals. Refer to the Operation and Maintenance Manual for complete details relating to the components and features of this apparatus. Only trained personnel should operate this vehicle or perform maintenance. You are responsible for learning how to operate this fire apparatus under all conditions without having to refer to the manual while operating at an emergency incident. This video will discuss types of warnings and caution labels. It is your responsibility to locate and identify each of the labels and understand the importance and associated hazards. Warning labels will point out procedure that must be taken or action that must be avoided to guard against the possibility of serious injury or death. Caution labels will advise you that there is a risk of damage to property if certain precautions are not followed. Continuous training, reviewing of operation and service manuals, developing good standardized practices will assist driver operators with a more complete understanding of the components and operation of this fire apparatus. As the driver operator of this vehicle, you are responsible for understanding the function of each component of the apparatus, maintaining control of the fire apparatus at all times while in operation, make operational and functional changes while operating at an emergency without having to read operator's instructions or safety warning labels, operate manual override and emergency shutdown procedures immediately if a component fails to operate properly. Components location may vary with each Pierce Fire Apparatus. Review the exact location of each component prior to operation. Major inconsistencies between your vehicle and the information contained in this video should be directed to your sales representative. Safe operation of any vehicle is the responsibility of the driver operator. You must learn the location and function of all controls, switches, gauges, valves, inlets, and discharges. Due to a higher center of gravity, heavy trucks have a significantly higher rollover tendency than other types of vehicles. To reduce the risk of rollover, avoid making sharp turns, excessive speed, and avoid abrupt maneuvers. In the event of a rollover crash, an unbelted person is significantly more likely to become injured or die than a person wearing a seatbelt. In the event of a crash, unbuckled occupants can also become a hazard to other occupants as they may be thrown around inside the cab. Seatbelts are required while in operation. Please refer to your warranty certificates for details and information enclosed in your manuals. Customer installed equipment must be mounted to withstand road travel and comply with NFPA 1901. Modifications such as drilling holes or welding to structural frame components of the chassis are not permitted. Contact Pierce for instruction and review of non-structural sheet metal or other dissimilar metals for modification. Follow the radio installation guide for further assistance on installing or mounting electronics. Before placing your new apparatus into service, Perform a primary inspection of key components of the apparatus, including all fluid levels, anti-lock braking systems, electronic stability control, and automatic traction control. Weigh your apparatus to ensure that it conforms to axle and brake ratings. Never exceed the gross axle rating printed on the label inside the cab. Exceeding these ratings could lead to reduced component life, personal injury, or death. Review the use of auxiliary braking systems, compression brake, exhaust brake, electronic retarder, and hydraulic retarder. Before placing the apparatus in service, refer to the operational maintenance manuals. 
information on the operation and maintenance functions for the components such as the pump, pressure governor, and foam systems along with other options is provided in either the Pierce manuals and or other manufacturer support information delivered with the apparatus. If you need more information, please contact Hughes Fire Equipment. Congratulations, North Las Vegas Fire Department on your new fire apparatus, job number 33635. Please utilize this five-digit job number when referencing your apparatus with Hughes Fire Equipment and Pierce Manufacturing. We'll get started on a brief orientation of your new apparatus. Starting down at the front bumper area is where we'll begin. Let's first start on the passenger side face of the front bumper and also on the driver's side face of the front bumper. You have dual sirens PA speaker systems. Just inside of that you'll find dual air horns. Located in the very center the 57 number on the outer edges you'll find two paddle latches. When those released will gain access to the tubbed storage location for your front bumper load. Up on top of the bumper you'll find a mechanical siren and also a fire bell. Moving up onto the face of the apparatus on the outer edges, you'll find a marker light and turn indicator. Just inside of that, you'll find your headlight structure housing low and high beam headlights. And directly above that, you'll find two forward facing emergency warning lights. Moving to the grill, the American flag behind the Pierce logo is where you'll find the release mechanism to gain access to the hood area. Up onto the windshield, you'll find three windshield wipers across the seamless one-piece windshield. On the outer edges of that location, at the very top, you'll find running lights clustered in the center, three running lights on the brow of the apparatus. Just above that, you'll find a forward-facing floodlight, and all the way to the top on the roof is where you'll find your emergency warning light bar. Located within that light bar is your Opticom. On the outer edges, you'll find a flat and convex mirror on the very top. Let's take a couple of close-ups of the things that we just talked about. First, let's start in the center, inch and a half swivel discharge inside the front bumper extension. As we look to the side, on each passenger and driver's side, you're going to find on the bumper extension emergency warning lights. You'll also find on the driver's side your shore inlet, which is a 20 amp auto eject plug. Just to the body side of that, you'll find the air inlet. And as we move once again to the front, just reach your hand behind the Pierce logo, and that's where you'll find the release mechanism for the hood. Quick uh, image here of your department logo. Let's take a look at the side of the apparatus. At the very top section, you'll find a side facing scene light. Just beneath that side facing scene light is where you'll find your visual water tank LED indicator. And then you have sufficient grab handles for either right or left handed for going aloft and also reaching those cross lays. As we look to the cross lays, there are three cross lays located here in this section. Let's uh, talk about a few more items. First, starting in the upper right hand corner of this image. And we'll start with the four items around the outside edge, which is your oil, water, volts, and fuel gauges. Located directly in the center is your tachometer. There are some indication warning indicators here. Let's first start in the very center at the top with your check transmission. If illuminated, it would be in amber color. On the left-hand side, you have oil, stop engine, and low battery. On the right hand side, you'll find a water temperature, check engine, and low fuel. Located the two at the very bottom, this is going to be a audible speaker. The outer edge of that bezel does allow you to dampen the sound. Once again, just to review, check engine illuminated in the amber color. Check engine also along with the check transmission. And then in red, if illuminated, would be a stop engine. Let's move to the right now, talk about some of the gauges on the right hand side. First, this is your master pump intake gauge. Moving just to the right of that location will be your master pump discharge. Let's move further down on the pump panel itself. We'll cover a few of the items. First, a couple warning ideas here. Uh, this is an entanglement hazard. Be cautious because of those hoses coming out of those cross lays. There is the possibility for entanglement. There's your three cross lays across the front section there. Also, we have a warning indicating here that not to engage the throttle unless the light is on. That's a green indicator. And then also, once again, a audible warning sound. As we move to the right, this is your Pierce Pressure Throttle Governor. 
And as you move all the way to the right, there's a set of switches here. First, you have your driver's side flood, passenger side floods, driver's side scene, passenger side scene. Also have rear scenes and also an air horn switch. In the upper right hand corner, a panel light. And then just beneath that, you'll find a pump engaged. That's an indicator. It should be also indicating your pump is engaged and also the green indicator where the audible alarm is located. To the right, you'll find two ports. This is your vacuum and pressure test ports. Just beneath that, you'll find a twist engine cooler. And then to the far right, you'll find your water tank level indicator in the blue module. Let's move all the way to the right-hand side of the pump area where you'll find your tank fill recirculating line. Just down beneath that, you're gonna find your fire pump primer. There are some special instructions just beneath that that for best practices, you should be at least 1,000 RPMs prior to engaging that fire pump primer. Just beneath that, you have the tank to pump, and then we also have that warning label not to ride on because of a fall injury. Let's now move to the upper left-hand side. This is gonna be your foam system. This is your Pierce Husky 12 foam system. To the right, you'll find the foam system level indicator. This is how much foam is in the foam tank. And then just beneath that, you're gonna find two placards here. First on the left is the foam system specification instructions, and on the right, the Husky 12 foam system specifications. The black pack here, uh, placard from Pierce, is your minimum operation maintenance schedule for 150, 200, and 250 PSI. On the left is the associated GPM with the test pressure at 150, for example, and on the right is the RPM. Also located here is your watch wrist placard, indicating that you have a CSU pump it is a capacity of 1,500 GPM, and there's also information regarding the serial number and ratio of 2.46. As we move to the left, this is your manual pump shift. There is a caution label just above that. And then at the very bottom, we do have a foam warning label here, not to mix different brands' consistencies of foam. To the right is the auxiliary foam functions. This is your foam inlet, foam strainer, and also foam tank drain. Across the bottom, you're going to find all your associated color-coded and labeled drains. I would like to point out that only trained personnel should operate this piece of equipment only after reading the owner's manual and receiving proper training. Also down the lower section here, you're going to find the driver's side auxiliary inlet. It is a female 2.5 inch coupling. As we look behind the pan door, you're going to find your foam valve. The instructions for that are on the left-hand side for foam fill operations. Just underneath the uh, side panel is where you're going to find the foam pump discharge drain and foam pump intake drain. As we move to the compartment just past the pump panel, I'd like to point out the very top section here. This is the location for your auto charger and also your air compressor. A little bit of a close up here. These will activate when plugged into shore power only. As we move through just in front of and rear of the rear wheel, you'll find bottle storage location with retaining straps. As we move through the rest of the compartments, you'll find LED lighting, dry deck material, and also adjustable shelving. We're now just behind the rear compartment, ultra low sulfur diesel, silver cap, 4.5 US gallon DEF tank, blue cap. Just above the rear tire is where you'll find your pegboard for your tools. D-handle opens the pegboard. On the right-hand side of the hinges, there is a locking mechanism. If you've opened it fully extended, it will lock open. As we move to the rear compartment, I would like to point out the very top section here. You do have 12-volt access. This is a barrel-style or round-style 12-volt access. As we move to the rear of the apparatus, turn, brake, and also emergency light and reverse light indicator. A couple of warnings back here. First, shouldn't ride on the back of the apparatus while it's in motion. There is a fall injury associated with that. And also there is a pressure warning hazard here that caps may be under pressure while removing those caps. Use caution. We do have a couple close-ups. This is your rear scene lights. Controls the lights at the very top. You also have in the center, directly over the center compartment, a traffic advisor controlled from the driver's area and then also your backup camera. Moving down to the very bottom, you're gonna find the rear compartment, LED lighting, dry deck, and also ventilation. As we move to the passenger side rear section, this is your ladder storage, 24 and 14 foot ladder, also a folding ladder, 
and then also long tool storage at the very top. As we move to the side of the vehicle in the top section is where you're going to find additional storage location with these hatch compartments. Moving to the dunnage area, you're going to find your water fill on the left hand side and on the right hand side you're going to find your foam fill. There is a warning here regarding not mixing different brands consistencies of foam for a foam failure hazard. Also always look to the Husky 12. This is the hydraulic reservoir for that. There is a sight gauge and then just at the very bottom of that there is also a manual shutoff for that hydraulic fluid. The very top is the fill location. As we move to the rest of the dunnage area, you'll see your red line and then also your master stream device. You do have an extended gun located on the top. As we move to the front section of the cab, just to point out, this is a non-walking surface. That's why we have these warning labels here. It is not sufficient for uh, walking due to slip hazard. All right, let's move now to the uh, other side of the vehicle. This is going to be the passenger side. Just a quick glimpse down the side of the vehicle. Point out a few items within this area. First of all, the very rear compartment, the upper left-hand corner, you do have, once again, 12-volt barrel-style access location here. You also have dry deck material and adjustable shelving location. As we move just forward of this location, you'll find SCBA bottle storage with retaining straps for those SCBAs. As we move to the center compartment, you'll find LED and also uh, dry deck material. Moving to the forward section, which is just in front of the rear tire, you'll find two bottle storage locations. I would like to point out this warning label here, extremely hot diesel exhaust temperatures. Be cautious as to where you park your vehicle. That's what that warning label is for. As we move up from that, this is the forward most compartment. You'll find that 12 volt access point also. As we move to the side, this is mid-ship location where you're going to find your crosslays and also the passenger side pump panel. Let's take a look at some of the passenger side pump panel items, first starting with a pressure warning. Um, be cautious when removing those caps that may be under pressure. There are two 2.5 inch discharges on this side. You also have a large diameter discharge down at the very bottom in green and then just to the left you'll find your large diameter pump intake. Down at the very bottom you'll find a relief valve drain and as we move across you'll find all your associated color-coded and labeled drains. You also have a real rewind and also passenger side floodlight controls. Just inside the pan door is where you'll find your intake relief valve setting location. I would like to remind you that because your cab does tilt, there is a warning here regarding lift for uh, when you choose to tilt the cab so that those steps do not get uh, damaged. As we move inside the cab, you'll find warning labels on all parts of all doors as you gain access inside the personnel space. There are four seats located within the compartment, two forward facing and two rear facing, also with compartment uh, sides on each side. You do have a David Clark headset system. This is the module that controls the headset system on the rear wall. There is also roll-up door and also adjustable shelving inside. I would like to point out in the very center section you do have 12 volt access and also the location for your daily checks for oil and transmission just inside that space. Behind the driver's seat you'll find this audible speaker. This is for your backup camera audible. Just a quick view here inside the dash area of the driver's seat. Your vehicle is equipped with an SRS supplemental restraint system in the steering system area and also as we look at the dash you'll find on the left your transmission oil, DEF and water temperature. On the right you'll find your volts, fuel, front and rear air tachometer and speedometer in the center, diagnostic information above and below the speedometer. On the left hand side at the top you'll start with hazard lights, start and ignition switch. Just inside of that you'll find this small EM switch which stands for emergency master, controls all of your emergency lights, headlights and running lights, and then to the right you'll find a panel switch which will control brighten and dim for the panel lighting. 
On the right hand side of the column you'll find your OK to engage the high idle. As we look about the left knee of the operators where you'll find this red master battery switch and then just beneath that you'll find diagnostic information for your service tax. All the way to the floor you're going to find an air horn and mechanical siren foot pedals. As we move back up, just a general view here of the dash area, let's first start on the far left hand side of the image with the yellow pull to apply your system parking brake and push to release yellow diamond. Moving to the right, you'll find your Pierce command zone. Tremendous amount of information here right at your fingertips. Please see your owner's manual. To the right, you'll find your Allison digital transmission pad. You'll see a digital readout in the window. And then also to the right, you'll find a set of switches retarder on and off, retarder auto apply, future switch, your radio push to talk, and also mirror heat. As we move to the right, you'll find your pump shift. There are instructions here from road to pump and from pump to road on each side of that. You do have two green indicators prior to exiting the cab. Once the pump engaged and the OK to pump have been properly illuminated, you now know you're ready for pumping operations. Just above that, you'll find your mirror control for the flat and also the convex mirror. As we move to the center section, you'll find climate control. And then just over the operator's head on the left-hand side, you'll find the height of the vehicle, 9 feet, 8.5 inches, your length, 33 feet, 2.0 inches, and a gross vehicle weight rating of 48,500 pounds. If you make any adjustments to your vehicle, please update this placard. Let's move overhead once again. Just a quick image look here uh, over the operator's head. Let's first start with the set of switches with the emergency master, roof light, front warning, and side warning. The next set of switches down are going to be your lower rear warning, upper rear warning, high beam flash, and opticom. These switches, when pushed or activated, will illuminate green around the outer edge. Let's move to the right of this set of switches for an additional set of switches for your siren brake driver side flood and passenger side flood. You do have the ability to turn on and off the load manager and then also front flood, driver side scene, passenger side scene, and rear scene. Let's move once again slightly to the right. This is going to be your traffic advisor. Further to the right you'll find your code 3 PA speaker system and also your siren. Just behind that, difficult to see in this image, is a red light with illuminating indicating your door is open or you have a compartment ajar. To the right, you'll find once again at a point of entry all of these warning labels for firefighter safety. This vehicle is equipped with a supplemental restraint system, an airbag. Please, before mounting any equipment in this area, please seek advice from Pierce Manufacturing. Also looking overhead, we'll identify a few items in this area, officer area, passenger side scene, and also the bell. As we move to the left, you'll find a Panasonic Weatherband Sirius XM MP3 CD player, and also a push to talk for your radio on the left-hand side of the dash area. As we move uh, to the center area, you're going to find two 12-volt barrel style and also a USB 12-volt access, a parking brake, and then just in front of that, your vehicle data recorder. This is a discharge port. Underneath the uh, officer seat, you will find a storage location. And as we move to the driver's seat about the right ankle, you'll find this placard manufactured for the City of North Las Vegas Fire Department from Pierce Manufacturing. It houses the date of manufacture, the job number, gross vehicle weight ratings. It also has the VIN and all of your fluid capacities. Congratulations, North Las Vegas Fire Department, on your new fire apparatus, job number 33635. If you have any questions about your apparatus, please contact your Hughes Fire Sales representative. Thank you.